of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. the surprises they have had since coming to Africa on the trail of the octopus, none startled Speed and Clint more than the sight of their old pal, Barney Dunlap, in Kano. Appearing at a time when they needed him the most, Barney identifies the boys to the emir, who thought them criminals because of what the octopus told him. Learning the truth, he invites them to the royal palace, and we find them there now, awaiting the emir to discuss future plans. <laughs> well, Barney, you're old sidewinder. <laughs> now, tell us exactly what miracle brought you here to Kano. Yeah, Barney... Last time we saw you in India, we weren't sure if you'd ever get well again or not. Well, kid, the fever left. Quick like a mouse. So I ate like a horse, got my strength and a few lost pounds back, cable Chief Riley, he cabled me where you were and where you were going, and I decided to meet you here in Kano. <laughs> well, did you know we were in prison? No, I didn't even know you were in town yet until you came barging out of the howling populace. You could have knocked me over with a feather. You could have knocked us over without a feather when we saw you, Barney. Are you sure you feel all right now? In the pink, kid, in the pink. But I was sure burned to hear the octopus was still alive and kicking around. After all our hard work in China and Tibet. Yeah. Uh, but don't worry, boys. Now that I'm back on the job, we'll have him tied up and delivered back to Chief Riley in no time. <laughs> oh, say, Barney, yeah, how did you manage to get so friendly with the emir in such a short time? My charming personality, oh, pal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you shrinking violet. Now, tell me the truth. Well, if you must know, Chief Riley cabled the emir I was coming. And I talked to him from my plane by short wave, just a little before landing, too. Short wave? Has the emir got a set? Has he? It's a beauty. And motion picture apparatus, too, right here in the palace. This Amir's a modern. Don't know how he feels about swing music, but wouldn't surprise me to see him shag or trucking through the palace halls any time. Oh, the same old Barney. Yeah. <laughs> see, that Indian fever didn't burn any cockiness out of you, did it? I should say not. In fact, the rest did me good. But... His Highness, the Amir of Kano. Uh-oh. The Amir's about to make his appearance, I guess. Yep, here he comes. Look, he's all alone. No bodyguard along with him now. He wishes to prove that he trusts us implicitly, Speed. My good friend. Trusts us? Then why is he shaking his fist at us? That's the Kano way of saying howdy, Speed. Like us shaking hands. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, they do things kind of funny here in Kano, don't they? I trust my servants have made you comfortable, Mr. Barlow. And that you'll now feel refreshed, fully recovered from your imprisonment. Yes, thank you, Your Hand. Uh, to think that I had the octopus here in my city and allowed him to escape... Believing you, the criminal. Oh, now, don't blame yourself. The octopus is very clever, but I, I never thought he'd pass himself off as me. In what manner can I aid you in capturing this man? Well, mostly by warning all your people and all who come to Kano to be on the lookout for him, Your Highness. And then, too, we should like the assurance of being able to call on you for whatever supplies we might need at any time. My city and my people are at your disposal. Well, thank you. Since you possess a shortwave trans-receiving set, we can keep in constant touch with you here at the palace. And we might call on you to relay messages to the Legion outposts that possess similar sets, in case we should need the Legionnaires at any time. This, too, shall be done. Now, when we leave here, we're going to make a non-stop flight to Banana in the Belgian Congo. Until we reach there, I should like to feel that Kano is our base of operations, and anything that we might ask for will be supplied. Rest assured that all your desires shall be granted... By some means or other, Mr. Barlow. Boy, and that means a lot, Clint. Coming from his highness here. I realize that, Barney. And I wish there was something we could do in return to show our appreciation. Oh, there is, Mr. Barlow. Oh, what is it? I have never ridden in a, an airplane. Would you grant me that favor? Would we? Your highness, we'd fly you clean to the Belgian Congo if you wanted to go there. <laughs> Thank you, no speed. I believe I should remain in Carno. But what is your answer, Mr. Barlow? Will you grant me my request? It's an honor, Your Highness. When do you wish to make the flight? Immediately, if you are not too weary. Us tired? No siree. And then, 
As soon as we descend, I shall order my workers to prepare your plane for the long flight to Banana under your supervision, of course, Mr. Barlow. Thank you, Your Highness. And now, if you're ready, let us go to the plane. Gosh, Clint, the way the Amir's dressed, do you think you can get the plane off the ground with him in it? That gold cloak of his and all his jewels are plenty heavy, to say nothing of the Amir. <laughs> we never have more important-looking passengers, V. That's the thing. He's taking some of his nobles with him. Yeah, and a dog. Pipe the pooch. Gee, what a swell dog. Oh, wait, we better stand by. Here comes the Amir. May we enter the plane now, Mr. Barlow? Oh, yes, Your Highness. You and five of your attendants may make the flight. Our plane is limited to six passengers. But what about you and Speed and Mr. Dunlap? Oh, we'll be up in the cockpit most of the time, Your Highness, or roaming back and forth. You just pile in and make yourselves at home. Up them steps. Very well. <laughs> Gosh, for a minute, I thought he wasn't going to get through the door. Trouble is, him and the dog tried to make it at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, they're all in now. Yeah, okay. Pile in. Now, uh, please fasten your safety belts in case the air is rough, Your Highness. Speed will show you how. Sure. You can take off meantime if you want, Clint. A check. I'll depend on you and Barney to answer any questions His Highness may ask. Okay. Here, let me fix that belt for you. Thank you, Speed. You're not nervous about going up, are you, Your Highness? Nervous? Oh, no, Mr. Dunlap. The hand of Allah will hold us in safety aloft as on the ground. I shall always count this as one of the greatest experiences of my life. Clint's getting ready to take off. And here we go. I don't think your dog likes it very well, Your Highness. He will get used to it. This is wonderful speed. A true miracle to be flying as a bird flies. With the addition of some nuts, bolts, and canvas, Your Highness... To say nothing of a swell pilot. See my city below us. How strange to look upon it from above. Yeah, we're gaining altitude fast. Hey, do you hear another plane, Barney? Who are you kidding? This ain't Grand Central Airport. No, listen. You're right, by golly. Let's take a look out the window. There it is. It's coming right for us. Yeah. Hey. Hey, that's the same plane that took off right after I landed. What? Then it's the octopus. Octopus? Suffering catfish, we've got to land again. He's up to no good. He won't harm us. Harm us? He'll try to blow us out of the air, Your Highness. You might fly higher than you thought you would before we're out of this. Get up to Clinton warn him, Speed. You must have seen him. He's banking to get out of his way. He'll never do it. The octopus plane is coming too fast. Step on it. Step on it. Is he going to ram us? No. No. He's using a machine gun on us. You get up to Clint, Speed. Where are you going, Barney? To our machine gun turret. We'll give that rascal a fight if that's what he wants. Now's our chance to really get that octopus guy. If he doesn't get us first... (laughs) 